you think to yourself, I couldn't possibly get my carbs down any lower. Triple B&E is a lie detector. <laughs> it's able to see that there has been some carb creep, definitely cheese for us, nuts for us, probably some keto delicacies, even if it's perfectly keto, keto chocolate, that we gonna have to do life without for the next month. And I'm not happy about it. Let's, let's just be honest, you know, honest, I'm not happy. Hey, what's up family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, Two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. Ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos and we do product reviews. We talk about various keto topics and every Monday we go live on Keto Beyond the Couch because life exists beyond the couch. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website which is twocrazyketos.com and that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon and that way every single time we're having eggs on top of meat thins, you'll be alerted to it. I want my morning like drink. Sorry, no <laughs> Celsius for you. No Celsius, no performance gains. No keto brains. So. No sympathy. <laughs> <laughs> Drinking a big giant thing of water today. Got some daily minerals in it. So uh, we are on day two of beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. And you know what? There's lots of stuff that we also can't have, but can I share with you something we can have? And that is a victory that we get to share with someone else. Of course, I like just pulled it up. Let me see. Day two. And already noticing a difference. They're noticing a change. I had two meals yesterday, the last one around 5 p.m. I had coffee this morning, and about an hour later, I was hungry. I usually don't eat until about 10 a.m., and my thirst first thought was, no, too early. You have to wait until later. And then I thought, no, you're supposed to be eating when you're hungry, and I am hungry now. So I scrambled six eggs, fried up two slices of bacon and a hot dog. I never ate six eggs in one sitting plus the other stuff, but I finished it all. So much for having scrambled eggs left over for later. And with the last couple bites, I could feel how my chewing slowed down and I had to really concentrate on swallowing the food because I was full. No way I could have eaten another bite. I am starting to think that this is going to turn out to be a great experience and I'm looking forward to seeing what the next few days are going to be to look like that is awesome. I love that and again that's I know it is a scary thought to yep. eat until you're full but when it comes to beef and eggs and bacon your body's gonna tell you like I've had enough that doesn't happen when we're eating garbage no it just doesn't happen when we're eating food that we're not supposed to be eating but your yeah. body's got a shut off valve when it comes to just protein and fat mm -hmm. and you're that's why beef butter bacon egg works so well now, again, I, I want to stress this. People are like, well, I've gained weight on beef, butter, bacon, egg. Well, you could gain weight, but it, should, it wouldn't be fat. You could be gaining muscle and bone density. But beef, butter, bacon, egg doesn't mean eat all the beef and all the bacon and all the eggs. And oh, by the way, you can have two sticks of butter. I can eat butter for dinner. No, the butter aspect comes into what are you cooking with? You can also cook with other animal fats like beef tallow, things like that. Duck fat. And like, are you putting, you could put some butter on top of your steak or something like that. But it doesn't mean sit down and throughout the day, eat a stick of butter in addition to eat all of the beef and eggs and stuff you want. The, it's like, just kind of like an add-in. It becomes your condiment, okay? So your condiment shouldn't be, for most of us, should not be a meal. It should be something that's elevating the beef and the butter and the bacon that you're eating. Right. Remember when you used to have a salad and it was mostly just ranch right. dressing? Don't do that with your butter. Right. So here's what we are having. Rachel's having four eggs. I had a large dinner last night and I'm not super hungry, but I'm a little hungry. So mm. I don't have it with me, but I did eat 
a smaller bag of the leg of lamb carnivore crisp this morning. Oh, wow. You're hungry today. I was really hungry today. So Rachel's having four eggs and then some meat thins. I'm having two eggs, but then I'm also having a bag of carnivore chips. So if you're curious what this is, we have a recipe video. I'll leave a link up here. It's basically how to make your own carnivore crisps or carnivore snacks at home because that stuff is $40 a bag and this works out to be like $5. And in my personal opinion, it tastes better. This is from a New York strip roast. And so I basically put it in the hydrator 167 degrees for about five hours. This is what it comes out to be. Super, super thin. I vacuum seal it. So, and I do keep it in the refrigerator, although you could keep it out of the refrigerator but I like if you're it vacuuming, cold. sealing it. I, it just, it's going to last longer in a vac, if you vacuum seal it and then put it in the refrigerator. Um, but what I really like about this is people say like, I am having a hard time eating protein, like not just on beef, butter, bacon, but outside. We always tell you, eat, you should be eating a minimum of an 80 to, 80 to 100 grams of protein. That should be your minimum every day. And people will be like, I can't eat that much because of the volume. This will help. Well, here's the thing. This here is equivalent to, in protein wise, somewhere around, a, I haven't weighed this out. Can you hand me that that uh, scale right there? I'll tell you exactly. Cause it's generally about a two to one, three to one ratio. So if I met, weigh this out, this is 3.4 ounces. So, this from carnivore crisps or carnivore snacks would cost you about $35. Right. Okay. So that means this is about a 12 ounce steak. So think about a 12 ounce steak, but I'm eating that here, but it's only three and a half ounces. What's nice about that is you, you do lose a little bit of the fat in the, in the cooking process. It drips down the bottom. Not as much as if you were cooking it like on a grill, but, you're not losing but you the do protein. lose some, you lose all the water but you retain all the protein. So this has the same amount of protein as eating a 12 ounce New York strip steak. But that means that it's easier to get it in because it's not gonna take up as much volume. Mm -hmm. I have a hard time sitting down and eating a 12 ounce steak, but I have no problem sitting down and eating this. And so this is a great way to get protein in. So what I'll do is I'll eat my eggs. I will eat these if I'm full, then mm -hmm. I'll put whatever's left in the refrigerator and I will eat them later on. I am going to eat this and I love it on top of the meat thins because it's super crunchy. It has an amazing mouth feel. That's his favorite thing is the carnivore chips. Chewier, doesn't fall apart. I just love the meat thins. So the meat thins, we also have a recipe for deal. It's up here and that is super easy. All you need to do is go to the store and buy Steakum right. or any off brand. We go to BJ's and buy the ones there. What you want to do is look at the ingredient label. If it's 100% beef, you're good. You're safe. Buy that while they're still frozen. Separate the pieces of wax paper. Put them into a dehydrator for about four hours at 100 and anywhere between 155 to 167 degrees. The top setting you have is good. And you're going to get that and become like a sandwich, like bread almost. Mm -hmm. um, they do fall apart a little bit more than this, but Rachel likes that. I mean, look and at it. And we salt it. Uh, before we go, today we're going to do a bunch of meal prep. So people always ask, how can I meal prep for beef, butter, bacon, and egg? So that's what we're going to do. We're going to do a full day of eating. We're going to meal prep some beef, butter, bacon, and egg. But one thing I wanted to just kind of put out there, beef, butter, bacon, and egg is beef, which is any ruminant animal. So elk, bison, lamb, any, any four chamber stomach animal, you can have that. Um, butter. Bacon, we include pork and bacon, but it should not be most of your diet. You should be mostly eating ruminant animals. Uh, if you're gonna eat a pork chop, I'd be very limited with that and make sure you're adding a bunch of fat because it's too lean. But pork belly, bacon, uh, ground pork, like 80, 20 ground pork, I think you're fine with all that. And then you have obviously your eggs, any kind of eggs you want. If there's something in there you don't like, like I don't like bacon, you don't have to eat it. Just eat beef, yeah. butter, and eggs. Seasonings should be salt and maybe a little bit of clean seasonings. We like Redmond seasonings, things like the organic garlic pepper, the lemon pepper, things like that. Just be aware seasonings are have carbs in them. Even when the label says zero, that's for a serving size, which is a quarter of a teaspoon. They're rounding down, so when you multiply it out, it's gonna have carbs. 
one seasoning or two seasonings I, from Redmond. Although we tell you Redmond seasonings are great, there's two that are off limits on beef, butter, bacon, and egg. Um, you can have this one, but again, I'd use it sparingly. It does say zero carbs, but that's for a quarter of a teaspoon. So Wasatch steak. Um, and the taco is clean. But the chili lime is a no-no. It's my favorite. On beef, butter, bacon, and egg. And so is the barbecue, the Red Rock barbecue, because they both have a sweetener in it. I know. So Red Rock barbecue uses allulose. We don't even buy it because it just clumps up here in Florida. And then the chili lime, which is Rachel's favorite, has stevia in it. So chili lime from Redmond, it's a no-no on beef, butter, bacon, and egg. But the rest of them are all fine. Okay, bad news. What's bad news? Uh, you're out of meat thins. Okay, I thought there was like a hole in the roof or something <laughs> like that. I don't know, you and your meat thins, like. I go through a lot of meat thins. I am not gonna apologize for my meat thins. I might rather session. have a hole in the roof than you not have no! meat thins. No, <laughs> well, I mean, for your safety, right? Yeah, so we're out of meat thins and there are no more like steakums in the freezer or anything. So no like backup. That. There's no backup, I can't even make any more. Let's go to the store and get some. So how are you doing so far on day two of beef, butter, bacon, and egg? I want my Celsius. <laughs> right? Do you feel like you're having withdrawal from certain ingredients? I'm definitely feeling like I'm having a little bit of a withdrawal. Um, my headache got fixed. I think I was just really low on electrolytes because um, I had it yesterday. I thought I had enough electrolytes in me, but I guess I didn't realize like how much I rely on taking in electrolytes like as far as like Element and Redmond Relight and you know Keto Chow drops and or even eating a Keto Chow because you know I had a headache most of the day yesterday and I thought I took enough and then I woke up this morning it was even worse and I was like this is weird because I don't normally get headaches and you know during the Keto Beyond the Couch this morning I took four more Keto Chow electrolyte capsules, or actually not capsules, but the tablets, they're the old ones. Now they have capsules. And that was in addition to the three that I had already taken in the morning of the capsules. And within like 15 minutes, my headache went away and I don't have a headache, but I didn't really think about how much like I was going to need the electrolytes compared to when like I'm not on beef, butter, bacon, and egg, and I'm drinking elements and relights and things like that. But I need this. I, I'm right now definitely at the heaviest weight that I've ever been on keto at 203, 204 pounds. And I feel bloated. I feel inflammation. I think a lot of it is just inflammation from just eating too much cheese. That's the bottom line. I eat way too much cheese. And getting away from this cheese and heavy whipping cream and even having a Celsius every day, I think it's going to be good for me to just completely reset my body. Okay, sorry. I'm going to have the air conditioning on when I'm talking because, yes, it is cooler outside than normal, but it's still Florida. And tomorrow it's, it's supposed to be 60 degrees. Well, this ain't tomorrow, friends, and it's hot right now. Hot enough that I need air conditioning. So. What am I noticing from day two of triple B and E? I won't even video Joe so that he doesn't like amen this, but I'm snarky. I'm more snarky than normal. Amen. <laughs> On triple B and E. I said you're not supposed to amen it. Um, but there's little things that I have used as self-care that's food related. So I have extra coffees. I put um, whipped cream, you know, perfectly keto, but I'm using whipped cream on my coffees is like fun. I drink diet sodas. I drink Celsius. I, you know, have different flavors. I have nuts that I normally eat. And there's a certain measure of carb creep that even the, the most diehard keto person will have to face when they do something like triple B and E. Like you think to yourself, I couldn't possibly get my carbs down any lower. Triple B and E is a lie detector. <laughs> it's able to see that there has been some carb creep, definitely cheese for us, nuts for us, 
probably some keto delicacies, even if it's perfectly keto, keto chocolate that we gonna have to do life without for the next month. So I'm doing without these things and I'm not happy about it. I, <laughs> and because I'm not happy about it, Joe's not gonna be happy about what I'm having to go without right you now. You sound like your mom right there. I'm not happy, but my happiness should not be hinged on or dependent upon whipped cream. Should it be dependent on nuts or how much soda I'm allowed to have access to? I should be happier when I'm healthy in my body and I should be looking at things that can't be consumed that um, would bring me happiness. So we're on a little self-exploration going on and I, I'm taking Joe with me. So we're hoping that we both make it out alive by the end of this triple B and E challenge. Okay, so we are headed to the store mm -hmm. and I wanna ask this question, but I'm gonna hurt you today <laughs> if your answer is, I don't know. So I hope for your sake, and the sake of our viewers who may want to see you in a future video. Okay. What's for dinner tonight, Joe? I don't know. Okay. I'm going to give you one more shot at this because your first answer displeased me. What is for dinner tonight, Joe? Beef. Okay. Butter. Bacon. Eggs. Now, here's the thing. So, we need to go get you meat then. I'm That's getting ready to like... <laughs> Send you to Jesus, friends. We're going to get your meat thins because you definitely want meat thins with your dinner. Okay. Right? So, um, I we're going to do a whole bunch of meal prep. We're going to do some ground beef. I'm going to meal prep eggs. But I figured that for dinner, since we're going to the store anyway, we can just see, like, is there any roasts on sale and get, like, a nice roast or a nice steak. You know, a lot of times you go to BJ's and Sam's Club and they have special meat and so i'm kind of looking at like making some kind of special meat special meat you know but here's the thing again people ask like can they, there are recipes for beef butter bacon eggs there's there's only so much you can do with beef butter bacon and egg right? roast that roast you can have a roast or fry up that hamburger you can have hamburgers and you can have ground beef what I like to do is to actually change up the flavor and still keep it at a high fat profile is I like to mix like three pounds of ground beef to one pound of ground pork. Right. So the pork brings in some fattiness. It brings in a change of flavor. And I feel like I'm getting a lot of different things in that, you know, but I honestly tend to want to add cream cheese to my ground beef. Right. And we can't have that on beef butter bacon. Nope. Do you have anything? that you would like. How about, instead of you asking me what's for dinner and putting it all on me, do you have a special request? And then we can go off of the special request. Can you feel the thinly veiled, like disagreements going on? Can you feel the carb withdrawal in this car that's happening right now? It's in our marriage. Like when people are having a hard time eating this way as a couple like some people think like the best thing ever will be like when my husband and I are both eating the same way but it's not like it stops all of your arguments right you like find new things you to argue find about. new things to get ticked off about um I think that I would enjoy a really nicely cooked hamburger hamburger maybe actually have some bacon bits in it, I know we have some bacon bits. It's not your favorite. You don't have to put it in yours. But um, sometimes I like that for texture. We also have some of the little carnivore crisps, um, briskets, crumbles okay. that might add some texture to a hamburger. Um, but yeah, I feel like if you could pull off a really well-cooked hamburger, I like the pork and hamburger blend for a hamburger i think it makes a really good one a lot of times that's what they use in meatballs that's that's common practice when you're making meatballs it's usually a mixture of ground beef and pork we found out that denny's likes to make their hamburgers with a mixture of beef and um pork sometimes when you're thinking to yourself gosh 
that restaurant hamburger was extra juicy. There was a moistness that I can't seem to get at home. What's going on with their cooking technique? It's probably a mixture of beef and pork. So I would be up for that unless you found just the most gorgeous ribeye steak. We were mentioning this earlier today on Keto Beyond the Couch. This was something that we used to have all of the time. These little like round circles of Hillshire Farm pork kielbasa. Do you know how many servings are in this, Joe? I would say eight. 24. Yeah, no. 24 servings. And I understand that this is like a big box store serving, but 24, I don't think so. And guess what? Every single one of the servings is three carbs. So what are you looking for? You're going to eat something that you're like, this should be almost no carbs, right? And instead it's like, what, 75 carbs, 80 carbs? So this is something that we like to buy. Most of the time I look for 80-20, but they have 90-10. But I'm going to get some of this so that I can mix it in with our ground beef. They also have some ground lamb. I think we're going to try some ground lamb as well. So here's something that is great for making meatloaf or making burgers. And that is this meatloaf and meatball mix and it's just a blend of beef pork and veal they're not adding anything else so we're gonna get this it is a 949 for 40 ounces so two and a half pounds at ten dollars so that's not bad it's about four dollars a pound every time we come to the store you ask if we need butter we have like a hundred boxes of butter in the house because every time i come here i grab a butter if i'm by myself so we've got some meat we've also got some laundry detergent because bj's is the cheapest place to buy laundry detergent because there's coupons psa now we're just looking for rachel's um steakums or whatever brand it is here then really I think gourmet, usually. we're going to uh, push it. We're going to try to run across the street real quick to Sam's Club because I haven't seen any special meat here. Yay! They actually have it. How many are you getting? Fifteen. Um, I think we should get three boxes. Okay. To well, get started. beef, butter, bacon, egg. You may eat close to a box a day sometimes. I, I would say we should get four. Okay. I am not. I am not opposed to that. Ground beef crumbles. This is actually a really good deal because it works out to be about five dollars a pound. Now we have a video where we make our own, and of course we think you should make your own. But if you're in a pinch, this is really great because they cook up super, super fast. You know what I just realized? Yes. We save a lot of money coming to BJ's when we're on beef, butter, bacon, and egg. Because Why? we're not buying heavy cream. Cheese. We're not buying whipped cream. Nuts. We're not buying cheese. They we're come not in buying such attractive canisters, Joe. Oh, especially the macadamia nuts. I mean, every time we come and we buy a bag of macadamia nuts at Costco or something, that's like $18. We're saving money. I mean, that's a record. I think we got it out there in 12 minutes. I'm pretty impressed. Now let's see if we can do it again at Sam's Club. How fast can we do this? It's so hard because there's like all of these Christmas and Halloween and Thanksgiving decorations to look at. And I have to just pass right by them and not even look. Look at this. This is a toy section. <laughs> all in girls' toys. My first Christmas with a granddaughter and I have to like blow through it. If you're curious, the reason we have to blow through is because we have a live stream in 40 minutes and we're 20 minutes from the house. So, uh, but it's, it's like do this or don't have food for dinner. So do this. So this log is always a good deal and it's a cheap way to make a whole mess of hamburgers. Okay, somebody on the live stream today asked about pork rinds and triple B and E. Um, just check the ingredient label. This, these are plain, usually that's your best bet. Fried pork skins and salt. That means that they're frying it in their own pork fat. If they're frying it in a different oil, they'll list it, usually like canola oil or peanut oil or something like that. So you're looking for something like this that just says fried pork skins and salt. Seven minutes. That's gotta be a record. But I think that's great. We did not have to stop for things like shrimp. Yep. We didn't have to stop for spinach artichoke dip. Cheese. Cheese. Lunch meat. We didn't need to get any chicken wings, no salmon. No, sh did I say shrimp? Because I, I want to talk about it twice because I miss it that much. Nothing. There's so much stuff that we didn't stop for. Yeah, and Scan and Go is amazing. If you don't know about Scan and Go, you got to use Scan and Go when you come to Sands Club. You can walk in and out in, in just seconds. Am I the Seven only minutes. one, though? that really enjoys the Sam's Club pizza. I mean, the Costco pizza is good, 
But the Sam's Club pizza, where it's got all of the different toppings, because it's like in everything, you scrape it off and throw out the crust. And I kind of miss that coming in here and going out without it. And what's making matters worse is I'm in the middle at home of editing a video. Where you are eating Where we're making pizza. And that video is going to come out. And sorry if you're on beef, butter, bacon, egg, but there are some people that aren't on beef, butter, bacon, egg. And so we decided we're going to release it in the middle anyway. Why do you have a funny face when you're drinking? Because I miss having a flavor to my water and I'm trying to make sure I get my electrolytes in. And so I made sparkling water with our soda stream. I put that in here and then I'm like, I'm just going to put some Dr. Berry mineral drops in here. Which we normally have a little bit in each one. I put a lot. Uh You instantly know when you put a lot it's, in. It doesn't taste bad, but it has taken me a long time to go, why does my water taste funny? Like, it, it tastes funny. And I was like, it, are my filters bad on the Berkey? You know, we have the Pro One filters. It, like, what, did I not use filtered water in that one bottle? But no, it's the Dr. Berry Mineral Drops. Here, taste it. Let's see if it's bad? Yeah. It's disgusting. One of the things I love to meal prep for beef, butter, bacon, egg is eggs. And I'm not a huge fan of hard boiled eggs. I mean, Rachel absolutely loves them. For me, I could take or leave them. So I like regular fried eggs, but sometimes I don't want to have to pull out a frying pan. Now, before keto, one of my favorite things was always egg McMuffins. So today I'm going to meal prep a bunch of eggs that you would get like on an egg McMuffin from McDonald's. So I'm simply going to take my eggs and put one in each one of these uh, cupcake tins. It's just a silicone mat that I've got, a silicone cupcake tin that I have. And this makes it so easy. And then we can just stick it in the oven. And then whenever we want eggs, I can just grab them and they're already cooked. Now we just put them in the oven. 300 degrees until they're cooked. It's about 10 minutes. Well, there you go. 12 perfectly cooked eggs. It's pretty much like having a hard boiled egg. I like this better and I don't have to peel them. Now we can just take these out, put them into a glass jar and eat them whenever I want. So one of the things I like to do with these logs of ground beef is to make hamburgers. And this is an easy way that you can meal prep hamburgers because you buy these logs of ground beef and they're already round. So all you need to do now is slice them into whatever thickness you want for burgers. Then you can store them in the freezer or store them in your refrigerator, or you can do what we like to do and that is pre-cook them. So I like to put them in the smoker for about 35 minutes at about 300 degrees. That gives it a nice smoky flavor and it doesn't overcook them. And now whenever I wanna have burgers, I just have them ready to go. They're already cooked up. I can grab them out of the refrigerator and eat them. The other thing I want to do with this is take a section of it and I'm going to run it through the meat slicer at about one millimeter thick and I'm going to try to dehydrate them, basically like make a meat chip, but out of ground beef. Okay, so I'm going to make a mixture to make hamburgers and we're going to put in this kind of like meatloaf mix and it's got veal in it and it's got, uh, you know, just regular beef and some pork, but we're going to add some pork to that to just really thicken it up. And I'm actually gonna mix in some bacon crumbles as well. But first I'm going to put in about a tablespoon of this uh, Redmond organic garlic pepper. That's something that we eat all the time. Are you measuring that? I'm I, sorta, <laughs> sorta I'm eyeing it. And then I'm gonna put a lot of bacon bits in there. This is just an easy, quick, done bacon bit source we get at Costco. I'm just gonna mix this all together. So we're gonna be making hamburgers with this, but this is super versatile. I have used this same exact combination to make meatballs. You can cook them in the oven. I like to use the little silicone molds and make little meaty cupcakes out of them, maybe top them with some egg. This stuff is is really good all mixed together. So now that everything is mixed together, we are going to make the fastest hamburgers you've ever seen made because we're going to use these silicone molds that I have down here. So this one here is a third of a pound and this one here will make quarter pound burger. So all we're gonna do is just fill up the, all of the space. Start on this side because I don't think we have enough to do two full trays. Each tray holds like two pounds of meat 
and I think we have probably about three and a half pounds. So all you have to do is basically fill up all the cavities or the whole thing with meat, and then there's a lid that you put down on top, and it's gonna shape it into all of your different patties. Obviously, these are like octagon because it makes it just easier. So fill it all the way up. It should be level with the top. Okay, so this is what it looks like before I put the lid on so that I can just put it on and score the hamburgers. And what you're gonna do is basically press it down nice and hard. You're gonna get all of the air out of it. These guys are called shape and stores because you can actually just score them and then put this right into the freezer to freeze it. And then what I like to do is you can see, you probably have a little bit too much. I turn it over and then press from the bottom. Okay, so on this side, we didn't have enough to fill the entire thing. So I just filled the cavities that I could. So sometimes you may have a hard time like getting it together. Just make sure you have like all of the forms if you open it up a little bit. They have to actually fit in and they only fit one way. So sometimes you have to use your finger to press it down. And then all you do again is I flip it over, give it another press, and then you can flip it back. And then when you take off the lid, look at that, you have burgers. The great thing about this is once you have them all made, you can cook them immediately or you can just keep the lid on this guy and put it right into the freezer. That's why it's called the shape and store because you can store it already pre-made and then just grab them and cook them as you need them. How many burgers do you want? A lot. <laughs> I'm pretty hungry. There's, so there's, I think there's eight there. So. What are you eating? I, I don't know. I'm going to eat until I'm full. And I figure I'm going to make up a couple of eggs too. There is a fly right on top of the camera. It's kind of funny watching him sit there. <laughs> so I think what we'll do is we'll just throw those on a schwank wheel because they'll cook like super, super quick. Super fast. Okay, my hamburger carnivore chips are done. I uh, had them in the dehydrator for about four hours. Uh, came out perfect. They are nice and thin, crispy, exactly what I'm looking for, like a potato chip. Let's go ahead and give these a taste. Okay, here we go. Oh, those are good. I really like this. And it's like 80, 20 ground beef, so. There's some fat in here, got good flavor, perfect amount of salt. This may be another way that I do some like carnivore chips and it's much cheaper than even using, you know, like a uh, prime rib or something like that. So we got our grill up to temperature. We just uh, turned it on a couple of minutes ago. So we're gonna go ahead and get these burgers going. We're gonna lower this down and what we're gonna do is probably cook like four at a time. So I'm just gonna pull this out like this, I'm trying to do this with one hand. And we're going to put two burgers here and two burgers here. One, two, three, four. Now we will push this back in, push this back in. And what we're going to do is we're going to raise it up to about there. Okay, we're going to go ahead and check these. It's been about a minute and a half. I'm going to pull that out. And we're just going to flip these over. While I'm waiting for the hamburgers to cook up, I am going to have some bacon jerky. You like that stuff, huh? I love bacon jerky. I almost want bacon jerky more than I want hot bacon. Somebody else wants bacon jerky. <laughs> you have eaten her bacon jerky. I have eaten her bacon jerky. You get the carnivore snacks bacon jerky and Rachel will be like, um, I can eat that. Aww. How do you say no to that face? You don't. This looks good and it cooked up fast. So, Are you gonna have two forks over there or I get a fork oh, too? Oh, I'm sorry, there's a fork for you. <laughs> okay, so I cooked up all of the third pound burgers. Are we gonna eat all this? Maybe. Who knows? I don't know. 
I also had two burgers um, in the refrigerator that I had defrosted. I found them in the freezer and they didn't have anything bad in them either. They were just like burgers that were packaged up. So I cooked those up as well. One of these underneath. And one. so, yeah, so some of them are like a medium, like a medium rare and some of them are medium. So can I show you a burger? Mm -hmm. So look at that. Mm. Perfectly cooked. And the combination of pork and beef makes them so juicy. So mm. I'm gonna start off with a couple of burgers and I've got a couple of eggs. We'll probably have more. I didn't want any eggs tonight. I felt like I'm I- I'm gonna put some of this wasatch steak on it. I had to egged out. Are you? Mm. It's only day two. <laughs> Can you hand me my cup? Oh, you need your hand. I like to I like to begin each meal with a little bit of choking. I still haven't had my coffee experience. I'm gonna also put a little bit of mustard. Do me a favor and don't have your coffee experience around me. Because I am missing my coffee experiences. D you had coffee today, right? Not enough. Oh, not enough. Okay, let's try mm, one of these. I'll burgers. take some mustard. Oh, now you want the mustard? I do. There you go. Well, there you go. Really good. Super, super juicy. Mm. Cooked to perfection. I'm really enjoying that schwank grill. <laughs> I love that name. It's, and so again, schwanky. there's a couple, we were talking about it on the live stream the other day. There's a couple of brands, like there's Auto Wild, which is the one I think that Dr. Baker uses. And it is probably a luxury grill because it really, this is what it does. Not probably, it is. But. It does a really good job with burgers and steaks and stuff like that. And we happen to eat a lot of those. Mm -hmm. So I want the best experience possible. When beef butter bacon egg is over, I really want to try making one of our pizzas on there. Oh my gosh, yeah. Don't think about pizza. what you're gonna eat later. <sighs> you're, it's so... It's so much better than me. Well, it's just not helpful, Joe. You're right. Because it's like, okay, well, in 30 days, we're gonna enjoy this thing. Okay, well, how are you gonna live the next 30 days? Are you basically saying you're not going to live and enjoy these current 30 days? Like I am going to enjoy these burgers. Mm -hmm. And here's the thing. I like beef butter, bacon, and egg because it's simple. Now, some people don't like it because it's, because simple. it's simple, but I like knowing that the only thing I have to think about is what cut of beef am I going to eat today? Or what type of ruminant animal am I gonna, I don't have to worry about, am I having wings or steak? Am I having eggs or am I having ham? It's beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. And there's only so many ways you can cook it. Burgers and ground beef is probably my favorite. So like I thrive on this, mm -hmm. cause I, steaks are okay to me, but burgers and ground beef is super it's easy. Jam. And it's the, probably the easiest form of beef to meal prep. It actually works out really well for our marriage too, because even though Joe never knows what he's going to make, pretty much, except if we're making a steak or like a big brisket or something that takes even more time, not even a steak, more like a roast that takes a little bit of time, it's literally split done. So when it's time for dinner, you're not waiting so long. And it's something that we tend to meal prep for. Right. I mean, you could meal prep all the time, but it's like tracking. I don't want to track and I don't really want to meal prep all the time. I don't want to commit to like, hey, every single Sunday or every single Monday, I have to do a ton of meal prepping. Mm -hmm. So, but for beef, butter, bacon, and eggs, we actually take the time to meal prep. Because it keeps me like on track and it, it it's really helpful and you can just we always have something to grab so even if joe is not ready to eat but i am i can always grab meat thins always grab carnivore chips i always have, have bacon. the meat cookies that we made today we so always have meat cookies just made. always having a bunch of pre-cooked burgers and again i cook them till they're like a medium rare because this way if i want to warm it up it's i'm not, not gonna overcook it and I enjoy even eating those cold. Like, mm -hmm. you know, if we weren't on keto, on, on a beef, butter, bacon, egg, I'll add like other stuff in there. But I love just grabbing one of these and eating it cold. I'm a weird person like that. I'm, what about you? Let us know down in the comments. Section. I don't like, mind eating them cold. I like chicken wings cold. Okay, no. Like, I'll, I mean, chicken legs, like you get chicken legs and stuff, like grab them out and eat, no skin. I don't like the skin cold, but like the chicken meat itself, like I'm happy to eat it cold. So like this to me is perfect. Our bacon jerky, it's, oh, yeah. it's wonderful cold. <laughs> it's better cold. Like I always want it cold. Mm-hmm. 
So we're just gonna eat a whole mess of hamburger. Well, since we're gonna eat hamburgers, I'm gonna put across <laughs> the screen how many burgers we end up eating each. <laughs> Because I know everybody wants to ask and I'm not gonna continue the video until we finish eating. Right. Because I want to enjoy what I'm eating. So if you like seeing videos like this, take a look at some of the videos we have linked right over there. Also, make sure you take a look at the most recent videos I'm gonna put right over here. But whether you head this way or you head this way, don't forget to head this way. Subscribe to our channel and click the little bell icon. And that way, every single time we eat beef, butter, bacon, or eggs, you'll be alerted to it. Till next time. Bye. Bye.